So the question I want to coin to you guys, shit has hit the fan without rule of law, Tijuaki, Rawl, you name it. There's just a collapse, okay? How are you going to feed your turkeys, chickens, quail, duck? How are you going to do it? You can't go to the grocery store, can't go to the feed store, can't get grain. So how are you going to feed them? I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. So for those of you guys that don't know, I keep quail, chicken, turkey, duck here on the homestead. And so I have a pretty good sized flock and I let them go out and let, the pa let them pasture raise. But I do supplement, especially during the winter seasons when I'm trying to keep egg production going, I do supplement with feed. So if I want to keep my chickens, ducks, quail, turkey as healthy as possible, you know, I have to be able to provide them the extra protein and phytonutrients that they're going to need to be healthy. So I'm going to create a little DIY feeder hack here that'll help you get those important proteins and phytonutrients to your flock. And for those of you that don't let your uh, flock out on pasture, this is this DIY hack is going to be super helpful for you guys, especially if they're in some kind of enclosure or coop setup. Um, this is going to be definitely helpful. So let's take a look. So all you really need is a bucket. So I'm going to use this one. This was just laying around. I'm not using it for anything. So I'm going to make this into a DIY hack poultry feeder. And all you're going to do is you're going to take a drill bit. I'm using a 532 drill bit and we're going to put some holes in the bottom of this bucket. And just like that, we put a bunch of holes at the bottom. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put any meat source inside, whether it's cooked or raw, and we're going to put that on the inside of the bucket. And it doesn't matter if the meat is spoiled or not, because what you want is to encourage flies to land on the meat, lay eggs. Eggs are going to hatch into larva. The larva is going to eat down that meat source and fall through the holes that are at the bottom for your chickens, quails, ducks, turkeys, etc. And we're going to hang it using this very complex technology called a chain and a carabiner. And we're just going to let it hang right there in the doorway of the chicken coop. And inside the bucket, we're going to put some leftover scraps. This happens to be smoked chicken from almost two weeks ago. And so we put all our scraps in there. And instead of giving it to the pigs or, you know, composting it, we're going to make some high quality chicken feed. So for those of you worried about the smell, I wouldn't worry about it too much. I've done this before. I haven't had any problems with the smell. Number one, this is about at chest height. So it's going to be, if there is any smell that it's emitted, it's going to go up into the air first off. Second off, the flies are going to jump on this thing and they're going to do their biological function and they're going to lay and they're going to produce a lot of larva. And the larva is really going to eat this down within a matter of days, no problem. And when the larvae start to fall through the bucket holes, these guys are gonna make a quick, quick meal out of them. But if you are worried about any kind of smell, obviously the higher you place the bucket, the less likely somebody is to smell it. But like I said, I've had zero issues with that. The flies really make quick work of this and that's what they do in nature. And in the process, you're gonna have a lot of larva going through the, falling through the holes that are gonna produce a high protein phytonutrient source for your flock. Another helpful tip is if you are in vulture season or you have a bird of prey problem where you're at, you can always put a lid on the bucket. I know most buckets that come from Home Depot on Lowe's, you can buy lids for them. Don't worry about the flies not being able to get to them. The flies will always get to the meat. So there you have it. This is just a real economical, efficient way to feed your flock or at a very minimum supplement their food so you don't have to spend as much money on food sources, whether the prices of feed go up or they're just unavailable. So this is a great way and you can use pretty much anything. I mean, you could use roadkill if you wanted to. You could use dead birds. You could use animals that have died on the homestead, really anything. You know, you put it inside that bucket, the flies are gonna be attracted to it and they're gonna do their biological function. They're gonna lay eggs. Those eggs are gonna hatch into larva. The larva is gonna eat it down. Voila, you're done. And then once the flies have made quick work, of that meat source or that food source and you're nothing you're left with nothing but bones you can put those bones on your compost pile or whatever you can discard them start over again so this is a renewable source of food for your flock year-round 
So what we'll do now is we'll give that bucket a few days and we'll come back and see what kind of progress has been made. As gross as that looks, this is a chicken that died. You can see there's beetles and there's soldier fly larva all over this thing. And what happens is that falls through the holes here and provides a free meal to your chickens. You can see the larva moving right there. So like I said, this is nature and this is food, free food. Hey everybody, thanks for sticking with me. I've been wanting to make this video for a while, but things just get so busy here that, you know, I'll start on a video and then I need to wait a couple days for, you know, the breakdown process to happen and something happens and I miss it. So I'm glad we were able to get the end done with the rooster that, you know, that passed away. So we got a rooster and we were able to put the bucket and you were able to actually see the full breakdown process. So I appreciate you guys being patient with me and sticking, sticking through with it. This is a great option for those of you that especially have smaller flocks. With me, I have a large flock. So if I put up multiple buckets, I'd be able to put more of a dent in it. But I'm probably not going to be able to feed my chickens just with the bucket method alone. If you have a smaller flock, though, you absolutely could. You know, if you had only six chickens, you know, setting up a few buckets, you probably could feed your flock 100% off of the bucket method and then maybe just compost from your kitchen. So these are all options to, you know, really take yourself completely off grid in regards to your, you know, your chicken, eggs, meat supply. So I highly encourage you guys to take a look at this, see what your options are, but just know biology really works. You know, nature takes care of its own. And so being able to take those actual real life biological applications and apply them in a permaculture setting to be more sustainable and to be more healthy you know, for me, it's a win-win. So I hope you guys liked the video. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comment section below. I look forward to doing more content for you guys. And as always, as always, guys, long live the Republic.